okay let me share my screen so can anyone confirm if screen is visible yes sir okay thank you <clears throat> so good morning uh, we were looking at uh, capital analysis of block ciphers and uh, i was talking about linear crypto analysis where we involve you know so so we i was looking at linear crypto analysis of spn substitution permutation network okay which is a very simple iterative cipher i'm and in fact <clears throat> as you as you know these techniques were developed in 80s by shamir and his uh, colleagues uh, shamir is a israeli scientist who early worked in uh, on rsa crypto system and many other interesting things actually and uh, they they developed these techniques you know uh, you know this uh, uh, linear crypto analysis and differential crypto analysis, you know, which are pretty important. Though it's but they are but uh, a bit uh, lengthy to understand. But uh, anyway, so I am explaining it with an example so that uh, you can get an idea how this was working actually. You know, uh, so uh, you know uh, these were applied to uh, you know this popular uh, uh, cipher DES, Digital Encryption Standards which was a modification of IBM cipher, Lucifer. Okay, so uh, it's really interesting uh, that after this, people started thinking seriously about uh, replacing DES, you know, and uh, finally, you know, in year 2000, uh, AES, Advanced Encryption Standard, was framed, you know. So we are, we are going to talk about uh, AES as well. And DES as well, of course. Uh, now I'm not going to uh, put too much time on uh, DES, but I, I will explain to you how, how it was uh, working actually. You know, and so these two attacks are very important. So you know, uh, just to understand basically, you know, how these ciphers uh, you can actually uh, try to find the keys. Okay, and so based on this probabilistic analysis, you know. So let me again recall what we were doing. So remember, a block cipher uh, is a iterated cipher consisting of round functions, key schedule, and you know, and there is a algorithm to generate these keys. Okay, so essentially, this was the encryption process. Cipher text Y is a state after all n rounds. Okay, so we have so we're starting from you know. X, X is a plain text and with this round function with key K1, K2 and so on in each round we are using some key and then you know kind of iteration and finally Y is obtained you know. This was the cipher, this was the you know inverse of it and the substitution probability network is a special case of iterated cipher consisting of two components uh, substitution permutation uh, basically uh, you know, substituting uh, bits of string uh, is strings of length uh, L, and uh, then permutation of in some order, you know, of uh, of size LM bit string. So basically, the block cipher cipher has length LM actually, you know, and uh, you know, this notation I think we are using. Uh, so again and again. So if x is equal to x1, x2, x LM, x1 is basically first L bits, you know. So it's kind of concatenation of all these m bits, you know. Okay, so xi is something like this. This is important to note. xi minus one plus one up to xi l. Okay. So this is how we design the crypto system. Uh, so involving substitution function permutation, pi p the permutation, plain text. Uh, so plain text and cipher text are binary strings of length l m. And there's a key schedule, you know, k1, k2, kn plus one. Mm -hmm. Using this, we encrypt, uh, we do the encryption. Okay. And there's encryption algorithms, which we talked about earlier. Okay. And we are focusing mainly on this example to analyze, uh, you know, uh, these capital analysis where LM and everything is four. Okay. And uh, this is the permutation function and the substitution function. Both are given here, this is the permutation function. 
and substitution function in hexadecimal notations. You know, so 0 is 0, 0, 0, 0, 1 is 0, 0, 1, and so on. And then finally, A, B, C, D, which is, uh, you know, up to F. F is 1, 1, 1, 1, OK? So these are 16 things which we are using, the hexadecimal notation. And this was the uh, <coughs> uh, the whole process of substitution computation network, how these keys are working, how these S boxes. So these are known as S boxes, okay? These these are known as S boxes, as you know, at each stage what is happening, you know. So this is round one. UIs are uh, input bits and BIs are output bits, you know, and W W are the states actually. And then you know when you are mixing them with the key bits every time, the whole process is there. This is how you generate the key uh, initially, right? By taking uh, four at a time right so one two three four segment then one two three four segment then one two three four like this these five keys are used and the for plain text this we have done the analysis this is how the whole thing works starting from the plain text at the top and finally getting the cipher text so we were looking at uh, linear capital analysis uh, so basically what we do here we do try to do the linear approximation of the SPN network, okay, and we have done this using this piling of format by treating actually plain text uh, as as a random variable, ciphertext as a random variable, okay, and then you know computing the this kind of probabilities. So basically, we were interested in uh, bias of the system like this. You know, the bias of a random variable x i turns out to be pi minus 1 by 2, OK? So this is an important thing to remember. So and remember the probability of xi is equal to 0 is pi, and probability of xi is equal to 1 is 1 minus pi, where xi bar is a random variable, OK? So then we have computed these things. Uh, then we have used piling of lemma to compute the random uh, the biases of the random variable, which is sum of these uh, random variables, you know? Uh, exclusive R sum. So here is the formula. We have done this. And then I think I have shown you how to find attack. Uh, so basically, we look at something like this and we want to find the bias of this, you know. And uh, finally, you know, I have shown you. These are the linear approximation uh, picture. Uh, it's a linear approximation of substitution network where these S active boxes are S21, S22, S23, and S43. Okay. So from here, we computed uh, the, you know, the approximation. Uh, and actually, we arrived at these variables at each, each point. Last time we have done it, we simplified the sum of these variables and finally we arrived at this kind of expression which has bias plus minus 1 by 32 okay so up to this point uh, we have done in the last class now i'm going to show you how uh, we can actually use this fact okay so this as you can see that involves plain text bits these are plain text bits uh, variables random variables UIs from here to here, right? Uh, UIs are the uh, input bits in round four here because this is round four. Okay, okay. So, so this involves only plain text bits and bits of U four. Now, this expression uh, has bias bounded. This expression has biased, as you can see bonded away from zero away from zero so we can carry out linear attack okay so now how to do attack so let me explain the strategy and then the actual algorithm how it is going to work only focusing on the specific example, you know, I'm not going into too many details, but at least you should get an idea. So suppose 
you know we have t plain text and cipher text pairs they are total t t of them so we are looking at large collection of plain text and cipher text pairs you know okay and we have t so actually in practice you will see that uh, we'll be able to work if t is at something around 8000 then only you know in order for the successful attack we have t should be something around 8000 pairs of plain text and cipher text we should take actually okay now suppose tau is collection of all these t pairs okay all these t pairs now the attack will allow <clears throat> they will allow us to obtain the eight key bits key bits in k5 2 and K five four, okay. Namely, K five five, K six five. These are the key bits. K seven five, K eight five, K thirteen five, K fourteen five, K fifteen five, and K sixteen five. Okay. These eight key bits then are exclusive, uh, you know, Zord with the output of, uh, you know, the S boxes S24 and S44. You know, you can see that these are S24 and S44. Okay. Here. Okay. Okay. So there are uh, two days for eight possible, you know. There are two days for eight possibilities. possibilities for the list of eight key bits you know okay so two is for eight possibilities as you can see that there are eight eight of them one one two three four five six seven eight okay so we will refer to binary eight tuples we will refer to binary eight tuples. Basically, values of these eight keys or eight key bits we will refer to as a you know basically a candidate sub key. So we call it as eight tuple. Right, so all possibilities are there. So either zero or one, zero or one, right? So two days for eight possibilities. So it's something like this. So T four, five, six, seven, eight. Okay. All these K bits we can have all eight possibilities. Okay. So so you know, depending upon so each one uh, we can try as one of the keys. Right now, for each pair x comma y in tau. Remember what was tau? Tau was all these pairs of plain text and cipher text. You know, so all these plain text and cipher text. You know, pairs. There are t in number of them. You know, capital T. For each x y in this tau, and for each candidate sub key, and for each candidate. Sub key from here actually, right? 
it is possible to compute compute a partial descriptive compute a partial description of y and obtain the resulting value for u4 sorry u4 2 and u4 4 then so once we are done with this then we compute for the expression 4.3 this is expression i am calling it 4.3 for these random variables we look at the corresponding bits actually you know so we look at something like we compute x5 x7 x8 u64 u84 round 4 u bits you know u14 and u16 okay uh, taken on the random value 4.3 so i call it as a 4.4 this is an important thing now we maintain an array of counters array of counters indexed by 256 possible so this is indexed Counter index by 256 possible candidate sub keys. So we need to find out what are those sub keys, right? And increment the counter. Corresponding to a particular. sub key whenever 4.4 has value 0 okay whenever this expression is 0 for uh, each uh, sub key there are 256 sub keys possible you know for each those sub key bits you know we are trying to see if this value is 0 or not right so whenever it is 0 we incre increase the counter okay at the end of the counting process, we expect that most counters will have a value close to t by 2. Value close to t by 2. Okay, t is the total number of pairs actually. And but for the correct correct sub key counter have value close to t by two plus minus t by thirty two. So this will identify, you know, so whatever sub key will give us value close to this, right? Then we, you know, we say that uh, this is how we identify the uh, actual bits, okay, sub key bits. Can we identify it? Okay. So this is the general strategy for this. So let me give show you the algorithm actually how it is working. Here is the algorithm. So L1, L2 are, uh, you know, here hexadecimal values hexadecimal values these are l1 l2 are the hexadecimal values okay tau is our collection so tau is a collection of all t pairs of plain text and cipher text okay and pi s inverse is the permutation corresponding to the inverse of the s box this is used to partially decrypt the cipher text okay you can see here okay 
and output here uh, you know output max key contains the most likely eight sub keys bits so what we are doing here we are computing this expression 4.4 right uh, for every plain text and ciphertext pair okay for every plain text and ciphertext pair we are just computing this for each cc for each pair we are computing this value okay uh, for possible sub keys uh, l1 and l2 okay and uh, you know so you, we can actually see that using the picture that uh, you know using this picture 4.3 here yes using this picture you can see that we we are computing actually l1 zor y2 and l2 zor y4 actually you know so i am just right showing it here we are computing these values here okay and then this will yield you know v4 and v44 v42 and v44 okay so when l1 l2 is a correct key then u42 so when they are correct so then we apply inverse and we get u4 these are the input bits okay okay we apply inverse uh, okay again the values obtained uh, you know again the values obtained are correct if l1 l2 is the correct okay so then we we are just increasing the counter okay after uh, having computed uh, so you know we are actually computing 4.4 .4 and, and increment the counter for l1 l2 if 4.4 i mean this expression has value 0 okay this is we call it as 4.4 .4 normally our expression okay so after having computed all the relevant counters we just find the pair l1 and l2 we are just finding the pair l1 l2 okay corresponding to the maximum counter and so this is you know maximum counter basically we are trying to find this l1 l2 and so most likely keys are as the output okay so this is the algorithm for the linear attack and i i have given you only for this specific otherwise it's very lengthy actually you know only for this specific example you know how things are working okay uh, so this expression will be a bit larger and so on you know but anyway just to make sure that we understand i mean at least it's an important attack so we should try to understand the gist of it how it is working one thing now i should mention that uh, a linear attack uh, based on linear approximation having bias epsilon if the bias is epsilon is successful if we have this number of pairs is equivalent to c times epsilon minus 2 for a small constant c okay and uh, so if we take c is equal to 8 okay and in fact when epsilon minus 2 is equal to 1024 it turns out to be something that t is equal to 8000 okay so that is a one important thing to remember so <clears throat> okay so now uh, this was the basic of linear cryptanalysis uh, now i am going to give you some idea about differential cryptanalysis on the same example you know uh, so that uh, So I hope you got the idea, that some basic idea about this algorithm, how it is working. Okay, for each pair, we are computing uh, these values. Okay, and see if this is zero or not, and then we are increasing the counter if there is a, if there is one, if if you found one value which is zero, and then you increase the counter. Finally. Okay, so now we are ready with differential cryptanalysis.
So this is almost similar to linear cryptanalysis with some differences, you know. Uh, so what kind of pairs we should look for? I'm going to tell you how to do those things. So basically, in in differential cryptanalysis, I call it DC. We compute the exclusive OR of two inputs to the exclusive OR of two outputs of the corresponding two outputs, basically. Now, actually, why it is known as differential? Because differential means difference. We are computing difference of bits, actually. And in terms of, uh, you know, in the binary system, we know that it is nothing but exclusive R. Okay, so that's why it is, we are computing difference. Okay, essentially exclusive, exclusive R, you know. So if we have X and X bar, X star as two inputs. So essentially what, me, what I mean, it's, these are binary strings. Having fixed exclusive or value, you know, value. So we call it as x prime as is equal to x exclusive or x star. Okay. Now, this is uh, so I should give you first a strategy how it is going to work, uh, you know, and then I'll give you the algorithm. Okay. So, <clears throat> how different cryptanalysis work? What we do actually, this is also known as Chosen plain text attack. Okay. So attacker has a large number of large number of tuples X, X star, Y and Y star large number of pairs where x prime is equal to x exclusive or x star is fixed this is a condition okay and the plain text elements so these are the plain text elements you know x and x star are encrypted using some unknown key k yielding the cipher text y and y star okay so x and x star are plain text element and y and y star are cipher text element using some unknown key same key actually is used here again okay for each of these tuples what we do so for each of these tuples We will begin to decrypt the ciphertext Y and Y star. You know, you start decrypting it using all possible candidate keys. Okay, I call it CK, candidate keys. Okay. For the last round of the cipher, okay. Now, for each candidate key, for each candidate key, CK, we compute the value of certain state bits of the cipher and determine if these exclusive or has a certain value or not has a certain value namely the most likely value for the given input exclusive or okay 
whenever it it does the strategy is almost similar except that now the pairs are different actually as a linear to classes you know we increment the counter corresponding to the particular candidate key okay at the end of the process at the end of the process we hope that the the ck that has the highest frequency count highest frequency count right contains the correct values for those e bits okay so this is a general strategy again i am repeating so we're starting with the you know attacker has a large pair of x x star y y star what is x x is uh, x and x star are plain text elements y and y star are cipher text elements using the some unknown key k same key is used x bar x prime is equal to x exclusive or x star is fixed okay now for each of these tuples we try to decrypt y and y star using all possible candidate keys for the last round of the cipher for each candidate key value of the certain state bits uh, uh we look at the value of the certain statements and determine if the, these exclusive r has a certain values okay whenever it does we increment the counter corresponding to the particular candidate key at the end of the process candidate key that has the highest frequency count contains the correct value for the key bits okay so now i think i can give you some notations so that we can understand it this is the strategy you know i, I discussed the strategy general strategy how it is going to work so now Okay. Okay. So here is the definition. I S from M to N S box. This is the S box. Now consider an ordered pair of bit strings of length M. Say. X and X star bit strings pair of length M. Okay. Now input exclusive R of this S box is. Okay, and output exclusive R box. So output exclusive R is pi s acting on x exclusive R of pi s acting on x star. Okay, these are bit strings of length n. Length n. Why? Because input for strings here, output is a string here, which is length n. Here, it's a, the string is length m. Okay, bit string of length m n. Now, for any x prime in zero one m, we define delta of x prime as all ordered pairs. x comma x star having input x as you are equal to x prime okay so what does that mean okay so that means delta delta x prime is something like i can write it down 
x comma x x for x prime i can write it like this also such that x belongs to 0 1 m a binding string of length m how many pairs are there two raised for m pairs are there such pairs are there okay so for each pair so basically what is happening you know this is all order pairs x comma x star having input x plus y is equal to x prime okay so we can write it like this x comma x plus so basically uh, if we take an example here in the previous example l is equal to m is equal to n is equal to 4 that we have looked at in the clean linear capital analysis uh, you know suppose input x plus or x prime is 1011 1, 1. so delta of 1011 1, 1 will be 0 0 0 0 1 0 1 1 the first one 0 0 0 1 the second bit 1 0 1 0 because I am just taking the sum as you can see here I'm applying this operation here X with exclusive R X prime and so on this will continue until we have 1 1 1 1 and 0 1 0 0 okay because i'm adding 1011 to each of them 1011 we add here you get this when you add here you get this when you add here you get this okay and so on now for each pair pair in delta x prime this is delta x prime set you know for each pair we compute the output output exclusive r of the s box then we can tabulate the resulting distribution of output exclusive r's distribution of output exclusive r okay so there are two raised for m output exclusive words you know two raised for m output so which are distributed uh, among two raised for m possible values you know so basically a non-uniform distribution will be the basis for a successful differential attack so let me show you for this example let let us compute these things you know so you can see here for each x here can see here x is here right zero 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 one i have computed x star what was x star remember i'm writing everything like one zero one one is x star right one zero one zero is x star value right so all of them is here then y is given here right right y is pi s of x and y star is pi s of x star hello y prime is equal to so y prime here is y plus y prime sorry y star and uh, you know y is equal to pi s of x y prime y star is equal to pi s of x star now you can see that if i look at last column here y prime so you know i can see 
zero 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 is appearing how many times? There is no such thing, so it is zero. Zero 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 one. Now zero 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 one is also not there, so this is zero. Zero zero one zero. Zero zero one zero 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 one zero. Okay, zero zero one zero. Zero zero one zero 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 one zero 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 one zero 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 one zero 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 one zero. There are total eight of them. You see, so whole distribution I can see here, right? If you look at the last column, following distribution of exclusive R. This is the distribution of exclusive R. Okay, so only five of them. You know, this one one two B. Four and five. Only five of them are having, you know, basically uh, actually occurs. So it's a very non-uniform distribution. It's a non-uniform distribution. Okay. So. We can do actually computation for any possible input exclusive R, you know. So this we have looked at only one of them, but we can do it for all for anyone. Okay. So actually, uh, I can maybe now define define what is known as for x prime a string of length m. And y prime, a binary string of length n, we define n d of x prime comma y prime as size of x comma x star belongs to pair delta x prime. We just saw that such that pi s of x exclusive for pi s of x star equal to y prime i can look at this value as, as well you know okay so this counts the number of pairs with input exclusive are x x prime okay and uh, you know so input exclusive are s prime input exclusive r is equal to x prime and output exclusive r is equal to y prime so number of such pairs. This is counting how many such pairs are there. Okay. So again, you can here is a table, you know, for this. And D A prime B prime, you know. I can see that that how to compute this. Here A prime and B prime are hexadecimals. Okay. So, of input and output axis you are, you know. Now, the distribution of uh, what we have seen here, this distribution we have seen here, right? This distribution that we saw here is actually 0, 0, 0, 8, 0, 0, 2, 0, 2, 0, 0, 0, 0, 0, 2, 0, 2 is one of them, is this row here, see. 0, 0, 8, 0, 0, 2, 0, 2, 0, 0, 0, 2, 0, 2, this one corresponds to row B here. Okay. So this is the complete picture here. So this is this table is known as difference distribution table. Values of N D A prime B prime. Difference distribution table. For each of them, we have computed this. Okay. So, so now recall that uh, recall that input to the IFX box input to the IFX box in round R. is denoted by this thing and so basically 
this is given by state bits exclusive for key bits this is from the picture you know you can see so input to uh, input exclusive var is computed as so basically input exclusive var if you want to compute here so it is u r i exclusive var u r i star is equal to w r minus 1 state bits key bits exclusive r r minus 1 star yeah, I, we can simplify this to see that this value is state bits okay therefore the input exclusive r does not depend on the sub keys so input exclusive r this is input exclusive r does not depend on the sub keys and this is actually equal to output exclusive r of round r minus one okay it's kind of permuted actually okay so <clears throat> Okay, so basically, uh, I can now define what is known as this table actually. I call it as A prime denotes input exclusive R, B primes denote output exclusive R, and A prime, comma B prime denotes it's called as differential. Okay, so here each entry in this table gives us exclusive R propagation ratio, it's also known as propagation ratio. For the corresponding differential, okay. So how do we do this? Actually, how do we define? How do we find propagation ratio? Actually, the, yeah, we can define it as R P A prime B prime is equal to N D A prime B prime. This difference table divided by two raised for m. Okay, this is the propagation ratio. Okay, for the differential A prime B prime. You can define the propagation ratio. In fact, uh, there is another name for this. So RP, I mean, you can interpret it in terms of probabilities as well. Is equal to probability that the output exclusive R is equal to B prime conditions. Input exclusive R is equal to A prime. OK. Now, actually, uh, uh, these are the individual entries. We can compute actually uh, a particular differential trail. Okay, so let me show you. So, if you again go to our picture, this picture here in here. Yeah, here. So now you see in S21 here, S21 here, RP of 1011. You see these entries are there. These are arrows are means one. This is zero. 1011. 
right and output is 0 0 1 0 see 0 0 this is dark arrow so 1 and then this is 0 0 0 1 0 and this turns out to be half I can compute from the value so this is a prime this is b prime right so using this table I can compute the value okay in terms of hexadecimal duration similarly s32 will be rp 0100 0110 sc2 0100 and 0110 right you can see input output this is input this is output right this turns out to be 3 by 5 3 by 8 from the table similarly s23 rp 0010 0101 turns out to be 3 by 8 and and the finally s33 will have rp 0010 0101 turns out to be 3 by 8 once we compute for each uh, active boxes these can be combined to form a differential trail so i can write it down that rp of you see 0 0 0 0 1 0 1 1 0 0 0 0 0 0 0 0 comma so this is you can see that 0 0 0 0 1 0 1 1 0 0 0 0 0 0 0 0 this is the first input the whole thing okay then comma the second thing is 0 0 0 0 0 1 0 1 0 1 0 1 0 0 0 0 we are computing for the whole trail now so this is actually you can see that here it is 0 0 0 You see here zero 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 zero. This is the first one. Then next one zero. This one is zero one zero one. This one. Then next one zero one zero one. This one and then zero 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 zero. Okay, it is here. You can see that it is coming here v three prime, right? So basically. This turns out to be, of course, by assuming that these things are independent, which is not in practice. This is 1 by 2 times 3 by 8 cube is equal to 27 by 1024. Okay. So, in other words, if x prime is equal to, so basically this is your, our x prime. Okay. And this whole thing is our v3 prime v3 prime so now v3 prime is equal to this whole quantity if and only if u4 prime is also same thing 0 0 0 0 is same is like this 0 1 1 0 0 0 0 0 0 1 1 0 You can see that 0 0 0 0 0 1 1 0 0 0 0 0 0 1 1 0 right u4 prime same thing because this is a, a you know input that is the output okay okay and of course with u3 prime is equal to this if and only if v4 prime uh, u4 prime is equal to this with probability 27 by 1024 same 
So note U44 prime is the exclusive power of two inputs to the last round of S boxes. Okay, so now actually uh, we are going to present the algorithm, how it works. Uh, once we can compute these things, here is the algorithm. So we look at the pairs. For each pair, remember, uh, for each pair we have to do something. If you remember what we are telling you here, this is the general strategy which I was talking about. For each pair, we try to decrypt, right? So here we are going to do some certain filtering operations, whatever is not required. Okay, so Actually, uh, I should mention here. Tuples x, x star, y, y star. We need to filter out the tuples, right? For which differential hold are often called as right pairs. They are often called as right pairs okay so so basically uh, you know for the right pair we have u4 i am just not giving you too many details here but at least uh, you know some ideas is equal to for right pairs we have this quantity okay so a right pair must have y1 is equal to even a star and y3 is equal to y3 star okay if it has tuple does not specify this right pair property we will discard it okay so here is the algorithm now what we do in the algorithm for each uh, pair like this x x x comma y comma x star comma y star okay perform filtering operations so what we do here you see we check this condition for the right pair thing right if this is a right pair then we test each possible candidate sub key l1 l2 this is for the right pair okay we check, uh, you know, for L1, L2, as each sub key, and increment the appropriate counter with certain exclusive R is observed. Okay, we are incrementing the counter here. Okay, uh, if if that is observed, so this steps in, involved. These steps involved actually uh, computing the exclusive R with the candidate sub keys and applying the input X boxes, followed by the uh, uh, computation of the relevant exclusive R value, you know, so all these computations are going on. Okay, so this is the basically uh, general idea. I think that's all for, uh, you know, differential capital analysis. Uh, I gave you some ideas here rather than discussing in too many details, just to give you an idea, you know, how differential capital analysis work. So maybe in in some of your advanced courses, you can look into more details, uh, you know, uh, but uh, the basic one idea I have given you about the linear cryptanalysis and differential cryptanalysis for the block cipher. Okay. And uh, there are interesting stories about uh, once these ideas came out, uh, people started uh, uh, developing uh, different directions, you know, and finally AES was discovered, you know, anyway. So in my next class, I'm going to talk about uh, DES, Digital Encryption Standard, and AES, Advanced Encryption Standard. You know, so now this is uh, uh, really important. Uh, the next class is really important to understand the basic protocol. What till now I discussed, I gave you certain ideas about block cipher is an iterated cipher. And that iterated cipher, I gave an example of SPN, Substitution Permutation Network and how to uh, mount attack on SPN using linear cryptanalysis and differential cryptanalysis. 
with a specific example. I have not given you too many details, but at least some idea about how it is going to work. Okay, so fine. So I think uh, next class I'm going to look at uh, uh, a, a DES and, and then we'll look at AES. Okay. Thank you.